Yeah, thank you for inviting me to speak here today and thank you all for coming. Uh, today I'm gonna be talking about my main postdoctoral project um, about how, the role of BMP in, gas, in human gas relation. Um, yeah, so um, understanding how cells interpret cues in the environment to differentiate and create spatial patterns is one of the crucial questions in developmental biology. A famous and intuitive model for how cells interpret signals is the French flag model, uh, where cells are able to interpret uh, thresholds of concentration and differentiate accordingly. So for example, um, high, middle, and low levels of the morphogen signal defined by these thresholds C1 and C2, uh, would induce cells to differentiate to cell type one, two, and three. So for example, patterning in a tissue uh, could be explained by um, the differential concentration created by the diffusion of a morphogen in space, creating these spatial patterns. However, even though this model is quite intuitive, it's a bit simple uh, because for example, cells uh, might not development is highly dynamic, so cells probably are not feeling a constant concentration in time, but they are feeling a, a dynamic signaling. Cells move in the tissue, uh, secondary signals are induced, etc. Uh, so I've been interested in understanding more about what processes are behind um, uh, this uh, interpretation of signaling. And when it I joined the Worm Flash Lab. I started to study human gastration and trying to understand how um, this patterning process is controlled by exogenous signal. So during human gastration, the human uh, the pluripotent epiblast differentiates into the three germ layers: ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. And this is controlled by BMP from the extra embryonic tissues, which activates a cascade of signals in the epiblast. However, how cells interpret BMP and how this uh, differentiation is controlled by this cas cascade of signal is, is not uh, completely understood. Studies in uh, using in vitro uh, differentiation have shown that actually BMP does not act as a morphogen uh, because uh, when one um, cultures cells under different concentrations of BMP signaling, one can only observe that BMP is, is able to differentiate cells to one phase, so extra embryonic phase. And in fact, BMP needs, uh, oops, excuse me. Uh, I don't know, I'm missing here some uh, labels. Uh, but if you, for BMP to be able to, um, to induce other fates such as mesoderm, it needs secondary signals. So here on the first uh, row, um, cells are, um, are, uh, so endo endogenous secondary signals are, are in the media, while on the lower row, uh, so these secondary signals are uh, removed. As, as you can see, when secondary signals are, re are removed, there is no mesoderm differentiation. So BMP needs secondary signals to induce this mesoderm phase. So, uh, the model on the left, where BMP is able to induce differentiation to three fates, is actually not true, and BMP needs secondary signals to induce mesoderm fates. So my question was how to to build this model and understand how how it's how cells are combinatorially interpreting these two signals. So as I was saying, uh, development is highly dynamic. So we um, presume that not only concentration, but also time was important uh, in this process. So we expose uh, human pluripotent stem cells with different durations of BMP for signaling, after which we removed the BMP and looked at what the cells became after two days. 
And we were surprised to observe uh, morphogen effects in time, um, where under short durations of the signal, cells remain pluripotent, as marked by expression of pluripotency markers such as SOX2. Um, under long durations of BMP, cells became extra embryonic, as marked by markers uh, as ex oh, about, uh, as marked by expression of markers such as CDX2, HAN1, GATA3, et cetera. And interestingly, there was a window of middle durations where cells um, became mesoderm uh, by mar as marked by brachy. And in my talk, I will be marking pluripotency, mesoderm, and extraembryonic by pink, yellow, and uh, blue colors, but for easy uh, tracking. All right, so some studies have uh, suggested that duration and concentration of a signal may be interchangeable, meaning that uh, long, short durations of a, a high concentration may be the same as a long duration of a low concentration. Um, so we tried to understand if that was happening here, and we exposed um, cells with a finer range of middle durations where we saw high mesoderm um, induction. Uh, and we tried to see whether we could find a lower concentration under which for two days we could see as high mesoderm induction. And indeed, we couldn't find any low concentration that reproduced the, the high levels of of mesoderm observed by pulsing. So in this context, duration and concentration didn't seem to be interchangeable. So to have a, a better understanding of the interplay between duration and concentration, uh, we expose cells to different concentrations on the rows and for different durations on the columns. And this time I'm also adding the BMP inhibitor nogging when I'm removing BMP to make sure that there is no remaining BMP in the media. And, and, and so we observed that um, mesoderm differentiation peaked mostly on the same, under the same pulse length, so 30 hours. Um, as you can see, 30 hours is bigger than the 16 hour I showed you before. Uh, and this is <clears throat> explained by, um, because when BMP is removed completely from the media, one needs, as I will show later, uh, needs longer BMP to, 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 to make mesoderm. And you might also see that under a low, very low concentration, one needs more, a uh, longer BMP, and I will show, show that later. Okay, so next we wanted to understand the signaling dynamics that were controlling this uh, differentiation process. And we used reporter cell lines of SMART4 where we can, uh, that we can use to, to, to track BMP response by tracking SMART4 translocation to the nucleus. So as you can see in the movie, um, SMART4 goes into the nucleus when cells are exposed to BMP. And we also used wind um, reporter. Uh, so a, a GFP beta cat reporter cell line uh, where beta cat uh, goes uh, up in the nucleus when uh, cells are responding to, to wind. So we expose cells to different pulses of BMP and we observed that uh, BMP dynamics were very fast. So as soon as we put BMP in the media, uh, SMAD4 goes up. And as soon as we remove BMP from the media, SMAD4 went down. Interestingly, there was an endogenous wind signaling too um, that, that was bistable as a function of wind. So it, under BM, short BMP pulses, such as the pink and orange curves, it, wind either remained low or went up, but went uh, converged to a low level. 
while under long durations of BMP, <clears throat> wind, sorry, wind, wind uh, signaling go, went up. And even if BMP was removed from the media, uh, wind was able to stay uh, high, uh, suggesting that wind might have a, an auto activation process going on. And as I was mentioning before, you can see that when BMP is not removed with nogging from the media, there is a, 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 a level of BMP remaining in the media, which is enough to allow wind to auto-activate itself faster or earlier, um, allowing this mesoderm uh, differentiation under a shorter pulse. Um, and so what we can get out of this is that in order to differentiate to mesoderm, you need a pulse of BMP that is long enough to turn on wind. So, but then you need to remove it so that a cell uh, differentiates in, in a high wind, low BMP environment and become mesoderm. If BMP is too long in the media, we, BMP overrides wind and cells become extra embryonic. We also saw that concentration of BMP controlled the rate at which wind uh, was activated. And this explains why under low concentrations of BMP, we need a high, either a long, very long uh, exposure to BMP. Or, and that explains also why we see a low uh, proportion of, of, of mesoderm in under low concentrations. So we established a mathematical model with this data, which was is based in the network on the left, and we found parameters that could reproduce uh, the data observed. And next, we wanted to understand how the gene expression was changing in times. So uh, we built a SOX2 reporter cell line to uh, investigate how this pluripotency was controlled by the signals. And as you can see uh, in this cell line where cells are um, and used with BMP, SOX2 is lost. So tracking SOX2 dynamics in time uh, under this conditions, we observe that um, as soon as BMP is in the media, SOX2 starts to go down. And under short pulses, SOX2 is able to go up, so the cells remain pluripotent. Under long durations, SOX2 is lost. And under um, medium durations, uh, there was a two-phase decay of pluripotency that co correlated with this uh, mesoderm induction. Uh, we also made some uh, fixing at different time points experiments that I not because of lack of time, I cannot show you here. Um, but those showed us that uh, Bracuri expression actually is quite late. Um, and that cells that become extra embryonic don't go through a mesoderm uh, phase. So with these data, we were able to reproduce a kind of phenomenological cell fate network for this part on the right of the model. And with this mathematical model, we could reproduce the dynamics seen in the data or the overall dynamics in terms of mean expression. And next, we use this deterministic model to fit a noise uh, parameter uh, in order to try and fit the uh, heterogeneity observed in the data or the proportions of things. And we were really pleased to see that with that fitting of the noise only, we were able to reproduce that under low concentrate under con low concentrations, we couldn't see much mesoderm, while with pulsing, we obtained this mesoderm. Sorry, am I on time? Sorry, I, I can hear you. Okay, I'll, I'll continue. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, just to finish uh, with this uh, model, we were able to obtain this cell fate network that kind of summarizes the logic of cells. And you can see more about how we can take advantage of this cell fate, uh, sorry, fate map um, 
to to understand how cells interpret combinatorially BMP and wind on the preprint. And thanks to the um, uh, uh, fade map, we could come up with a uh, a new way of a new protocol to make mesoderm that was more effective than just uh, putting wind with chiron in the media, which takes uh, three days to make mesoderm. So using BMP for a short time to reduce pluripotency and then use cheer to induce wind, we obtained uh, a high mesoderm just under two, uh, after two days. And with this, I just want to thank the Warm Flash Lab and announce that I'm opening my lab in the CABD in Seville and I will be recruiting people. So if you're interested in these kind of questions, please contact me. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Eleanor. And sorry, Mike. My uh, microphone didn't want to unmute for a minute. Um, <laughs> so we've just got time for one or two quick questions, if anybody has any. Um, while we're waiting for that, I just want to, can you speculate at all about how you think the cell is actually measuring time? Uh, yeah, so I, I think because of the socks to, um, the socks to constant regulation by BMP, there is another preprint by the group of Itze Hemstrick, who investigates this question um, under IWP2, so wind inhibition. But basically, they also agree with the fact that SOX2 is kind of integrating this or measuring time. So the way pluripotency is lost uh, in time kind of measures the, the time of uh, the duration of BMP. Okay, thanks. And we have uh, one question in the Q&A and then we'll, we'll have to move on. So yeah. um, Marta is asking, oh, we now have more questions. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe answer some of those in the in the Q&A afterwards. So uh, Marta's asking, how similar do you think the fate map would be for mouse PSCs? Um, and she says, come from the gastroid field, find it interesting that in human, typically BMP is added to trigger differentiation in mouse, it's Chiron. Do you have any insights into that? Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know how it would change in right now uh, out of my head. I don't know how it would change in mouse. And then the second question I didn't understand. Uh... Uh, so I think it's again, it's, it's about differences between human and mouse. Maybe you could take a look at the, the Naga's several questions um, in the Q&A. And if you have uh, answers that you're able to give, you could type those into the Q&A box because I think we're going to need yeah. to move on, I'm afraid. Yeah. 